Hi guys, this is Mrs. Malley. I'm going to talk today about the different stages of clay. Uh, and when we talk about the stages of clay, we look at these five terms, um, six terms. So my recommendation is write down each one and you can kind of follow along to learn about them. We're gonna look at them in person and then we're also gonna talk about what you do with each of them and then also what is happening on the molecular level. So the first one, slip, is this really goopy material. Sometimes it's a little better mixed than this. It looks more like a pudding or like a cake batter. But basically, it's clay that's watered down. So I'm gonna show you what is happening with slip on a molecular level. So what you would see is the molecules of the broken down rock, okay? Uh, and so this is really, really tiny, very difficult to see. And then we see lots and lots of water in between. Okay, and so slip is kind of like a glue. We use it to hold two pieces together. You can use it to make some crazy textures too, but it's just watered down clay. Next one on the list is plastic clay. So this is plastic clay. It's anything that you can really easily uh, mold into different shapes. It feels kind of wet in my hands, but I can make lots of shapes. I can also ball it back up again and start over. If it starts to get cracky, it's not really fresh plastic clay anymore, and then you would want to recycle it, where this, I'm still, it's still fresh enough, I could keep using it. So let's go back to our molecular chart here. So with plastic clay, all of a sudden we see that those molecules are a lot closer together. We still see those little spaces in between, so there's still water that can float through each of them, but it's much less water than before. So plastic clay is what you start with when you're making things out of clay. The next one on our list is leather hard. So leather hard, we're talking about something that's holding its shape. So you can see this is a big piece of clay, it's flat, and I'm holding it and it's not really moving. But now if I go and try to bend it, it breaks. So what that means is now, instead of having the cushion of the water in between each of those molecules, instead, all of my molecules are touching in some way. There's still water, right, in between those little areas, but since they're touching, they're much more brittle. Leather hard's what happens after your clay has been sitting out for a while or you've been covering it slightly, but it's just starting to harden. This is a nice step to start doing things like texture or cleaning at the end. Following step is bone dry. Bone dry clay looks very different than what we just saw, leather hard clay. If you notice, it starts to look white. It's also very chalky in your hands. It creates a lot of chalky pigment. What you'll notice about bone dry clay, it's very, very, very brittle. You can break it in an instant. So you might be able to guess this, but bone dry clay means there are still little gaps in between the molecules, but now all of a sudden this clay has sat out so much that all of the water has evaporated. So instead of having little bits of the water, now we just have air, which makes it much more brittle. All right, next two steps, we have bisque ware. Um, oh yeah, bone dry clay is what you want before you put your pieces in the kiln. So they sit out until they're bone dry because water in the kiln makes things explode. All right, bisque ware. This piece or this piece would be bisque ware. And you might notice they sound more like a stone. They're a lot harder and it's much more sturdy. So if we go back to the bone dry clay, we see it's a little bit chalky and a little gray, but our bisque ware is this white clay. Um, so this has been fired once in the kiln, so because of the heat, the molecules have changed and kind of shifted together. So now we see this. We see molecules that once were separate, and now they're kind of attached together. There's still air pockets, but they're all really, really fused together. So we have some air in between but for the most part, they're really, really attached together. So this couldn't hold coffee. The, wa the coffee would go straight through it and leak out, but instead it just, um, so it's porous, but it's not able to be recycled again. 
all of these stages, leather hard, plastic, bone dry, we could add water to them and they would turn back into our slip. But once something's been fired, then all of a sudden you cannot do that anymore. And so this would be our bisqueware clay. Last one on the list, our glazeware. This is when you add the coloring to it. The coloring adds a glaze, a glass on the surface. Uh, it's shiny, it's sturdy, uh, and all of a sudden now it's not a porous surface. So it's the same exact one as the drawing that we have of the bisqueware, except now there's a nice layer of glaze over the top. And this protects it so that you can put coffee in a mug and it won't go through. So those are the stages. Hope you enjoy.